In this video, we want to learn how we can use the Riemann sum for estimating the area under the graph of functions. In this particular example, we want to estimate area under the graph of y equals 1 over x from 1 to 2 using four rectangles. First, with left endpoints and then with the right endpoints. Because we want to estimate the area under the graph of y equals 1 over x, first let me draw the graph of the function y equals 1 over x. Probably you know that the graph of y equals 1 over x is something like this. It has two parts, one in the quadrant 3 and one in quadrant 1. Here we want to estimate area from 1 to 2. So we don't need this part of the graph. So let me draw the graph of the function again, because we only need one to two. If we suppose this is y-axis and this is x-axis, the graph of y equals one over x is something like this. We suppose here to be one, here two, and this is the graph of the function. Because this is the graph of y equals 1 over x, if you plug in 1 in the equation of the function, the y value is 1 over 1, so here is also 1. And if you plug in 2 in the equation of the function, the y value corresponding to 2 is 1 half. So here is almost 1 half. What we want to do here? In this question, we want to estimate area under the graph of the function y equals 1 over x from 1 to 2. So we want to estimate the area of here. Why we want to estimate the area? Why we don't want to find the exact value for the area? With the integration methods, we can find the exact value of the area. But for now, the question is estimate the area with the Riemann sum method. Because here we want to use four rectangles, it means that in the Riemann sum formula, n is four. And so the Riemann sum formula for the left endpoints, which we show it with L4, L stands for left, is this f of x0 plus f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3 times by delta x. This is the Riemann sum formula for four rectangles for the left endpoints. Attention, if instead of four we had 10 rectangles, then we had L10 equals f of x0 plus f of x1 up to f of x9. So if we have four rectangles, we have to continue up to, up to f, f of x3. When we have 10 rectangles, up to f of x9. And delta x, of course, is here. So for the left endpoints, always we start from f of x0 and we continue up to f of x sub n minus 1. When n is 4, the last x is x3. When n is 10, the last x is x sub 9. If x is 20, the last x is x19. Remember this because the number of rectangles that we use is different in different questions. Okay, but what is x0, what is x1, what is x2 and x3 in this formula, and what is delta x? In the Riemann sum formula, delta x is always the width of the rectangles that we want to use for estimating the area under the graph. And delta x can be calculated always from this formula. So also you have to memorize this formula. Delta x is b minus a over n. n is the number of rectangles, which in this question is 4. But what is a and b? a and b shows the interval. 
here we want to estimate area from 1 to 2 so a is 1 and b is 2 so we have 2 minus 1 over 4 which is 1 over 4 attention we want to divide the interval 1 to 2 to 4 rectangles so it makes sense that the length of each rectangle the width of each rectangle is one fourth this is one fourth this is another one fourth one fourth and one fourth so delta x is the width of the rectangles but what is f of x zero f of x one and so on in the Riemann sum formula these are the length of the rectangles attention the area of a rectangle as we know the area of a rectangle is length times width or width times length here we want to make rectangles like this width is delta x times length and these are length so width times length again width times length and so on by adding all of these we can estimate the area but how we can find x0, x1, x2, and x3? Because we need to know these values to substitute in the given function, and then we can estimate the area. In the Riemann sum formula, xi in general can be found from this formula. a plus i times by delta x. But attention, delta x is b minus a over m, which in this question is 1 over 4. So basically, delta x is 1 over 4 in this particular question. But always we can calculate delta x from this formula. Or if you like, you can substitute that b minus a over n for delta x. So it's up to you to write the formula for xi in which form. This is one way for writing x sub i. So, based on this formula, what is x0? Now that we know the formula for finding x i's, let's find x0, x1, x2, and x3. x0 would be a. What is a in this question? a is 1. So, 1 plus. Because if we want to find x sub 0, so i is 0, so 0, times by delta x. What is delta x? Delta x is 1 fourth. 0 times 1 fourth is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So x0 is 1. So basically x0 is exactly here. Now what is x1? x1 is again a 1 plus 1 times delta x. 1 plus 1 fourth is 5 over 4. 5 over 4 is somewhere here. What is x2? x2 is 1 plus 2 times 1 fourth. 2 times 1 fourth is 2 over 4, which we, you can write it as 1 over 2, but it's better to leave it as 2 over 4. 2 over 4 plus 1 is 6 over 4. Of course, you can write this as 3 over 2, but leave it like that so x2 is here and finally where is x3 x3 is a1 plus 3 times delta x 1 plus 3 fourth is 7 over 4 so 7 4 over 4 is somewhere here now that we know x0, x1, x2, and x3, we have to plug in these values, these values, 1, 5 over 4, 6 over 4, and 7 over 4, in the function, in the given function, to find f of x0, which is f of 1, then f of x1, which is f of 5 over 4, then f of 6 over 4, and finally f of 7 over 4. So, L4 would be f of 1 plus f of 5 over 4 plus f of 
6 over 4 plus f of 7 over 4 times by delta x. What is delta x? 1 fourth. If we plug in 1 in the equation 1 over x, 1 over 1 is 1. So f of 1 is basically 1 over 1 f of 5 over 4 is 1 over 5 over 4 f of 6 over 4 is 1 over 6 over 4 and finally 1 over 7 over 4 all of these times by 1 fourth let's calculate inside the bracket 1 over 1 is 1 1 over 5 over 4 is 4 over 5 1 over 6 over 4 is 4 over 6. 1 over 7 over 4 is 4 over 7. All of these times by 1 fourth. If you use a calculator, you can see that this value is approximately 0 0.76. 0 0.76. Before I show you how we can use Riemann sum for the right endpoints, let me tell you what is the relation between this sum and the area that we want to estimate. Attention, when we use the left endpoints, we use this point, this point, this point, and this point for estimating the area. But what we actually are doing here, at 1, the y value of the function is 1. So basically, we make a rectangle like this. And when you multiply 1 by 1 fourth, this value is the area of this rectangle then we use the next point which is here and based on that we go up to the curve this is the y value we make another rectangle then we calculate the area of here what is the area of that rectangle it's 1 over 5 over 4 times by 1 over 4 and we continue this process for the next point. What is the next point? The next, the next point is basically here. We use this point, we go up, we make a rectangle here, we calculate the area of here. And finally, we use the last point, which is x3. We go up, we make a rectangle like this. We add the area of all of these rectangles. And as you can see, it's an estimate for the area, for the actual area. Before I show you the calculation for the right end points, let me ask you a question. Do you think by adding the area of these rectangles, or answer is bigger than the actual area, or it's smaller? If you attention, this is an overestimate, because as you can see, all of these rectangles that here we have are a little above the actual curve. So, the actual area should be less than 0 0.76. Later, that we will learn integration, we will see that the actual area is ln of 2. So the actual area under the curve of 1 over x from 1 to 2 is ln of 2, which is almost 0 0.69. So this is the actual value. Our estimate was 0 0.76, which is overestimate, as you can see. Now, let's use the Riemann sum for the right endpoints to estimate the area under the curve. The Riemann sum formula for the right end points when n is 4, when we want to use just 4 rectangles, is this. R4 
is f of x1 attention when we use the right endpoints we start always from f of x1 when we use left endpoints always we start from f of x0 so when we use the right endpoints we always skip x0 and we start from x1 and instead of x0 at the end we use one more point so we continue up to f of x4 for the right endpoints so the formula is this f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3 plus f of x4 times by delta x the calculation of delta x and x i is the same delta x again is b minus a over n which in this question is 2 minus 1 over 4 which is 1 fourth and x i is always a plus i delta x so what is x1 x1 is we don't need to do the calculation again because already we know that x1 is 5 over 4 x2 is 6 over 4 and x3 is 7 over 4 we know these values you don't need to waste your time to calculate these values again x2 is 6 over 4 x3 is 7 over 4 and x4 is 8 over 4 which actually is 2 if you want to write it you can write it as 2 now that we have everything ready let's use the formula of the Riemann sum for estimating the area r4 is f of 5 over 4 plus f of 6 over 4 plus f of 7 over 4 plus f of 8 over 4 or 2 i prefer to write it as 8 over 4 times by delta x delta x is one fourth again for finding f of these values we have to plug in these values in the function one over x in this function and so these values are one over five over four one over six over four one over seven over four one over eight over four times by one fourth so basically this is 4 over 5 plus 4 over 6 plus 4 over 7 plus 4 over 8 or 1 half times by 1 fourth. Again, if you use a calculator, you can see that this value is approximately 0 0.63. Now let me show you the relation between this calculation and the area that we want to find again this is graph of y equals 1 over x from 1 to 2 if we suppose here is 1 here is 2 we choose basically these points here we use x1 x2 x3 and x4 attention this is x1 which is 5 over 4 so this point is 5 over 4 the next point 6 over 4 7 over 4 and 8 over 4 what we are doing here attention because here we are using the right endpoints we do not use the left point of the interval we skip that point and we start from x1 and we continue and we include the last point of the interval which is 2 now we go up from this point and we make a rectangle how much we go up we go up until we get to the value of the function and then we make a rectangle and then we calculate the area of this rectangle where this calculation is 
done in our calculation look at here this width is one fourth which is one fourth the length of this rectangle the length of this rectangle is exactly 4 over 5 here is 4 over 5 so by multiplying width by length we calculate the area of this rectangle then we make another rectangle here again the width is 1 fourth the length is 4 over 6 after that we make another rectangle here which is 1 fourth times 4 over 8 and finally we make this rectangle here we calculate the area which is 1 over 4 times 4 over 8 by adding up the area of all of these rectangles we have a estimate for the area and of course this area is underestimated because attention all of these rectangles here are below this curve are below 1 over x do you remember do you remember i mentioned that the area the actual area the exact value of the area is 0 0.69 but the value that we got here with the estimation is 0 0.63 it is less than the actual value I hope by watching this video you have learned a little about Riemann sum formula for estimating the area under the curves. If you want to learn more about this method, watch my other videos. Definitely just doing one question is not enough to learn this technique. Thank you for watching.